Butterfly, I'm coming to you live from the Galveston, Texas Seawall. And we are having a family fish day, if you can see. Some of my family is already down there fishing. I grew up in Galveston, Texas, and it was nothing for me and my family to actually go fishing every single weekend. It was a way for our family to bond, a way for us to get food. But we decided to come out today. The weather was horrible coming from Houston. It was raining really bad. But we looked at the weather for Galveston, and we saw that the rain was just going to pass over. So we are out here today getting ready to enjoy each other. My grandbaby has already caught her first crab and this is her first fishing experience. So that's really exciting. And look at my hair. I have it, I had it in a messy ball, but can you see how much the wind is blowing and has blown my, uh, blown my, look at that. Oh, it's a mess. The wind has blown my little bun out of control. But look how choppy the water is. Water is extremely choppy, but that's okay. Growing up in Galveston, we learned how to fish off of the rocks. We used to fish off of the pier. We would fish in the Texas City dikes. But I thought I'd let you see some of what we have going on here in Galveston, Texas during my family fish day. Now, as you can see, going down the seawall, there's some very steep steps because we're on what's considered the dead end on the seawall in Galveston. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. These are some very steep steps, but guess what? We gotta do what we gotta do when we're trying to come out here and fish. Now my son and my daughter-in-law and everybody laughed at me earlier because we actually have to cross over this railing, cross over the railing to step on the big rock Yeah, they laughed at me earlier when I had to do that. And then we have to cross. And if you can see, there's water between each one of these rocks. But when you grew up in Galveston like I did, you learn how to just maneuver through all of this. And I know you can hear all the wind in the background. Look at the water. My mama hasn't been fishing in about five or six years. So we wanted to make sure we got her out here. My brother's on his way. I think my uncle is on his way. So we're getting ready to have a great family fish day. Look at that. My mom caught her first fish already, but it was a catfish. So we threw that back. Now, if it was a big one, if it was a big catfish, we would have kept it. My brother would have skinned it, cut it up. But my grandbaby caught another crab. All right, let's see. All right, look at that baby crab my grandbaby has caught. Oh, it's another baby crab. That's so cute. I think it's a baby crab. This is my grandbaby's Whoa. first, be careful, this is her first fishing experience. So I'm so glad we're able to be out here with her. That's her dad. This is her mom. Her mom has never fished before, so this is her first experience. So they're crabbing with her little frozen fish fishing pole. Look at that. That is so cute. It's supposed to move, London. It's alive. I don't want to cook it. Well, we're not going to cook it. That's so little. We have to throw those back. You can't keep those. Be careful, London. Please don't stand on the edge like that. And if you see my nephew here, my nephew has been fishing since he was a little, little bitty boy. So for him to be out here fishing, And that's his dad, my brother. My nephew has been fishing since he's been a small, small child. And if you see, that's my chocolate drop. All the way down on that end, he's fishing. So I just wanted you to see a little bit of what we got going on today, and I'll keep you posted. Put that on your arm. Now see, this is how the babies learn. This is my brother teaching my grandbaby. Turn it. Turn the thing. Hold that up. Hold that part up. Put your arm like that. Please. 
got a bigger crab this time uh still not big enough to cook so we're gonna throw it back but the crabs are out here today this is my other brother patrick we haven't seen him in a few years because he lives in a different town but he decided to come out and fish with us today so i was glad to see him and his wife melissa my son aj my sister-in-law, Melissa, we all out here fishing. My two brothers. That's the oldest brother and baby brother. The oldest brother in the turquoise shirt. We're waiting to see, well, my next to the baby brother. Waiting for the other brother to come out. Not sure. So this is my brother showing my daughter-in-law how to fish. She's never gone fishing before. This is her first time. So she's a little apprehensive about the water because it's so busy. The fishing king. I'm telling you, got the seaweed on there. Hello? So we got the frozen fishing pole. Now, this is my nephew, Jaden. Jaden, how long have you been fishing? Uh, about five. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Uh, I have caught a, I have caught a grouper. A grouper? Yeah. About how many pounds was it? Like, uh, 600 pounds. A 600 pound? How did you reel a 600 pound grouper in? Oh, I was like Deep sea, all right. You was with your daddy? Yeah. Okay. You like fishing? Yeah. Relieve nerves, okay. But well, that's good. All right, everybody. Well, we start a new generation of Simmons. Showing them how to hold the string, they got to know how to keep one finger on top. I mean, one thumb on the to hold the string, and this one up here to pull, feel for the pull. London say that's her spot right there. Mm. Just got wet because where Kelvin is, he's soaking wet. The water really popping up there. My tennis shoes is soaking wet. My socks soaking wet, but I don't. I'm not gonna put my slides on. Uh huh. <laughs> Let me get that. That's gonna be head. That's a head for sandwich right there. As you 
you can see sometimes when they start eating the shrimp, they get that hook caught deep in their mouth. But you know what? Got we was em. ready for one. Got em. Ain't no holding on. Now, when have you seen a catfish hold on to the edge of the bucket for deal life? When they say holding on for deal life, that's what that was in real time. Can you tell the people, Patrick, what's the what's the uh, technique for putting a shrimp, a piece of bait on a hook? What's the technique? Well, first of all, you have to take the shrimp and you run the, uh, your, your hook right through there. Then you, you slide it up and around, come out the backside and you're hooked. Now, why my brother sound like he on one of those fishing shows and this just, this hood fishing one-on-one -on -one, and he trying to act like he on the Bass Pro Shop fishing channel. This is my son Aaron. AJ, what is your first memory partially growing up in Galveston? Coming down here every weekend pretty much while you were growing up in Houston. What's your first memory of going fishing? Having my, my Snoopy, my Snoopy uh, fishing pole. A Snoopy fishing pole? Oh, I forgot about uh, that. It broke when I was catching a flounder. Yeah, we always used to go crabbing. You used to go crabbing? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, look like he might have something on it. See that? He might have something on there. I don't know. We're going to see. How important was it for you to come out today? fishing when we decided we were going to do a family fish day? Uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's very important. Just family time. Family time means everything. Get out, you see the young, the old, the experienced. The old or the seasoned? The, the seasoned, not old, <laughs> not old. All right, well, how important was it to you, for you to bring your family, Fazana and London, out here today? Well, uh, today was their first time ever fishing. Now, I feel like fishing teaches you patience. And uh, it's a lesson in fishing. You give somebody something, they'll take, they'll take it for granted. You teach them how to do something, you teach them a life lesson for life. So that's why it's important. All righty. Well, as you can see, we got some rain getting ready to come. So we're going to run upstairs and sit in the truck to let the rain pass over. And then we're going to come back down and finish fishing. Good, babe. Okay, AJ, you got a little something. What you got on there? Okay, it looked like he got a little croaker or uh, baby little whiting that we're going to use it for cut bait. Yeah, we're going to use him for cut bait. Oh, we're going to use him for cut bait. AJ just caught that. Okay, so we've come to a different location. We've come to a part and a uh, location in Galveston. You have to be a true Galvestonian to know. We actually came to fish under the bridge. And you, like I said, you would have to be from here to know what under the bridge means. So let me show you. If you've ever been to Galveston, you know that you actually have to come over this bridge. There's only two entry points to Galveston. You either have to come via ferry, which you would have to come from the Bolivar Peninsula, Peninsula, or you would have to come over the highway coming from the mainland, which is considered Lamarck or Texas City, or in my case, you're coming all the way from Houston. But this is the only entry point into Galveston outside of the ferry, which is on the opposite end of the island. So you would have to come over this bridge. And as you, as you can see, it's nothing but the Gulf of Mexico out there. So you actually come over the bridge. You're gonna go all the way around. And if you keep going east, on the road, it's gonna turn into what's called Broadway. Broadway is the main street in Galveston. So we're actually under the bridge. And the reason we call it under the bridge is because you actually come and you can literally fish from under the bridge. As you can see, there's gonna be a lot of people out here. It's raining though. We had to wait for the rain to stop. But if you look under the bridge, that's, and we call it the causeway down here. If you look under the causeway, you can park under the bridge, which actually brings you into Galveston and fish from under there. And I have so many memories of fishing under the bridge with my family because we would come down here and would literally stand on these rocks and fish for hours and hours. We would get out here early in the day and then we would actually stay out here all day long. And that was the best fun growing up with my cousins and my aunts and uncles. And look how close we are. 
to the water. So we decided to come over here under the bridge. As you can see, the water is a lot calmer over here than when we were on the seawall. My family and my other nephew actually came out here to join us. All right, see, now we didn't caught a stingray out here. That's live and in living color, but as you can tell, his tail is gone. So no telling what happened to his tail while he was out there. But guess what? We caught him like a regular fish. Look at that, live and up close. You don't get no. You don't get no more real than this. That's a personal fly. All righty, look at that. All right, Ron. All right, so I think we came to the right location. Mama had two uh, leads out there, and she caught two fish at once. All righty, that's a true island girl. Okay, so the fish on the top is called a piggy, and the fish on the bite bottom is a whiting. We'll keep the one on the bottom, which is a whiting, because it's actually big enough where we can fry it. But now that piggy, that's getting ready to be cut bait. Now, it doesn't get any better than this. Now, this is true island living. Unfortunately, I don't know what type of bird this is, and I'm not going to get too close to it because I'm scary. And I'm right here next to the water, as you can see. But this is something. If you can get in my comments and you know what this bird is, go ahead and let me know. But this is true Galveston Island living. All right. London got a good cast. We have a hammerhead shark. What do y'all think about that? But I get close to it. Nah, I'm not touching it. My <laughs> nephew holding it right now. Real live fishing. Oh, look at Romeo. He not scared. All right. You holding that shark? Uh oh. You holding a shark? All right. When you're fishing with a piece of cut bait, when you have fish that you're not going to use, you just cut up the meat and use it as bait. Like that piggy we had earlier, to my knowledge, no one eats piggies, but hey, somebody might. But we are using our little piggy fish for cut bait. And there it is, we're getting ready to fish with it. This bird is trying to eat that entire catfish. Look at him putting it in his throat. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. His throat is like a neck. He's holding that entire catfish in his, whatever you call it, stretchy thing. Look at that. He has the fish inside. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that. I guess you can tell I'm kind of scary, huh? That is an entire hammerhead shark. I don't know how he's going to get that hammerhead shark down his throat, but he has it in his side pouch from his mouth. Now, this is going to be interesting to see how he's going to swallow that entire hammerhead shark. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? Because I've never seen anything.
he just let it go back into the water. So this is my brother. Again, how long have you been fishing? Uh, about 53 years. 53 years? What's your most fond fondest memory of fishing? Fishing with my dad uh, in Galveston. And he caught a small fish and then a bigger fish caught it. And that was, that was a big experience for me. All right, so after that you were sold on fishing, right? Sold on fishing. Sold on fishing. How, how important was it for you to come on fishing today? Oh, uh, because it's family time. I mean, they own the water from the Alpha And Daddy, oh, he didn't take me fishing. He taught me how to fish. So that's what we're doing today, y'all. Teaching them the youngest ones. That's now the tradition. And Daddy, O is our grandfather. He's no longer with us, but that's what we call him, Daddy, O. So he would bring us fishing, and there would be so many of us at one time out here fishing and crabbing and just having a good time. We will be out here from morning until night fishing. So are you excited that your two grandkids are here fishing with you today? Not only my two grandkids, my two sons as well. So, yes. Oh, I totally yeah. forgot. And, oh, and, and, I, and my mom, my sister, you my sister, my nephew and his wife-to-be and his daughter. So... And Patrick. And, and Patrick, my, my brother. Wife, I mean, we're, we're all this is this is just bringing back memories. Okay, well, I'm glad you're having a good time. See, the boats, the boats are very close to us. It may not look that close to this video, but believe me, that boat is very, very close. The good thing about the boat is going to stir up the water a little bit, and it might bring some other fish that weren't as close to us. It might bring the fish over here to us so that we can catch them. Again, this is family. They can't probably get a piece of that shrimp like that. Now my great, my nephew has come out here today to fish with us. And I was telling uh, my daughter-in-law, he was the one who made me an auntie for the first time. I call him skinny, but that's my nephew, Jaren. Jaren, wave to the people. That plane is mighty, mighty low, but we do have a small airport here in Galveston, and I can only assume that's where it's going because it's descending. That's not something you see quite often down here. Okay, as you can see, my mama is in the lead today with her fish. She didn't caught another one. What kind of fish is that, mama? Speak up, what is it? Oh, you see a whiting? A whiting? Okay. So she in the lead, but if you can see my brother got a bent pole, he might have something on there. Now my son, oh man, he's really fishing with that frozen fishing pole. Now if you're a fisherman, you can fish with anything. And if you see, he's making it work with a little frozen fishing rod. That's when you're a real fisherman. You can fish with anything. Okay, everybody. So this is an example of when you go rock fishing. When your pole and your sinker and your hook is caught up in the rocks. And you can't do nothing but break your line and start all over. That means you have to start off with new sinkers, hooks, leads, anything. You lose everything when you get caught up in the rocks. All right, so Jaden and got him a fish today. You know what kind of fish that is, Jaden? Look like a whiting or a croaker. Yeah, it's a croaker. It's a croaker. That's what it looked like. Now, watching my granddaughter and her two little friends out here, this is nostalgic for me because we were, when we were little kids, if we were not old enough to fish, we found something to do and we would throw rocks in the water like them and just do everything and nothing all at the same time. But it was so much fun in Galveston. So to see these kids do that, memories. Guess who got hit in the leg with two four-round sinkers? Me. We decided to end our fishing day, but we're going to do it again really soon. So we're leaving Galveston and being with family was the best part of the day. So we're headed back home, but you'll see us again soon. Bye Galveston.